Hello everyone, reporting today for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Abhas, and with me here is Team 23070, the Royal Turtles from Hong Kong. They've put together another fantastic base bot and base bot plus this season for Decode, and I can't wait to jump into it. It has a bunch of great starter options for teams that are looking to have a really strong start to their Decode season, a great shooter, a really fast intake, and more, all coming up on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. If your team is looking for inspiration, check out the Studica Robotics FTC Starter Bot to get you going. Studica Robotics structure options are available in multiple colors with new components now available. Build better robots and receive a 25% discount off most kits and parts and apply for team grants when you go to studica.com slash robots. All right, guys, so before we start talking about the robot, walk me through your timeline a little bit. I know you release Basebot very quickly each season, so tell us a little bit about how long it took to put this robot together. I think we had the base bot uh, ready in, in week two, and then we decided that we want to up, do an upgrade, which is the base bot plus, and so we did that in the following week. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So from my understanding, you've built two different robots, base bot and base bot plus, and the biggest difference between them is the intake. So let's start with the intake for base bot, and then we'll jump into base bot plus for the rest of the interview. Walk me through that process. So for the base bot, we decided that it was simple. So we just decided to use a funnel which the human player can place balls in. So which are these two extrusions that can allow balls to can allow fit to up to three balls. And yeah, that's the basic idea for the base bot. And for the base bot plus, we decided that for an upgrade, we would need a ground intake. So we, yeah, we have uh, using VEX compliant wheels to intake mm -hmm. the ball. So talking a little bit about that human player intaking strategy, when you guys drove Basebot around on the field, can you tell us a little bit about how many cycles you were able to do with this human player feeding strategy and if that's something you think teams could be successful with this season? Um, um, after testing, uh, I think we did around uh, six, uh, five to six uh, cycles uh, on teleop. And, uh, we actually uh, did, I think we did pretty great and the balls, uh, shoot, the shooting of the balls are pretty accurate. Awesome. Yeah. Now jumping into Basebot Plus, let's start with your intake. You said you use those VEX compliant wheels. Tell me a little bit about how fast you're running them and what teams can look to do, you know, if they should use one motor, two motors, or even just servos. So we're using a uh, 11,050 uh, Gobuda motor to run the intake and uh, it's, it's all belted one-to-one -one ratio. So we have three rows of compliant wheels that uh, will guide the artifact in. Awesome, yeah, and if you can rotate your robot a little around to the front so we can see it from the head on, um, do you have a counter roller? And if if not, I see, I see you don't have a counter roller. Uh, what made you realize that you don't need a counter roller and do you think teams can simplify their design a little bit without one? Yeah, I think that because we built this based on base bot and so we decided to use the bottom extrusion so it's very easy to swap out the two and so we didn't implement a counter roller and we added a ramp right here so that the artifacts can still go into the robot very smoothly. Cool yeah and as far as uh, you know like driving around and intaking without this counter roller are you having difficulties collecting balls when your or artifacts when your robot is running like full speed into them or is that still a very smooth process? Uh, it, it's a pretty smooth process. Yeah, it's, it's driving around. It's, it still can collect balls pretty smooth. Uh, but I think there's uh, one major problem uh, of this robot that uh, we can improve is that we can add a funnel uh, at the intake uh, because these two uh, the balls are at the size. Um, it may uh, it may go into this point where it can't go into the intake. So I recommend teams to improve by maybe adding a funnel uh, at this base spot to make it more smoothly add intake. And and on that note, when, when, when I think about adding a funnel, one thing that comes to mind to me is like, how big is that gonna make your robot, right? So what is the what are the dimensions of base spot currently? And do you think it's like something teams can like build on and expand or is it already pretty large? So a, a drivetrain is quite compact. 
uh, I think it's around 16 inches. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the the length of the base bot is around, uh, again, 16 to 17 inches. So I think there is still space for teams to upgrade on and to extend. So the artifacts will, uh, these sushi wheels will go through the artifacts and into the gecko wheel right here, which will stop them. And if we want to store up to three balls, we can rotate the gecko wheel a little bit and then we can have the third ball. Okay, very cool. Yeah, and, and as far as like the gecko wheel, that's powered with another motor, is that true? Uh, yeah, it's another motor. Okay, so talking a little bit about your transfer process, why did you go with this gecko wheel design? Uh, and do you think teams would also need to use a motor? Or do you think they could get away with a servo powered system here? Um, I, I do think that a servo power system is also possible. But we decided that we just want to make things uh, a lot more re reliable. So we decided to go with a motor. And uh, the design process is to just guide as a indexer to the shooter. Mm -hmm. As far as compression and things go, can you tell us a little bit about the compression you have on your intake wheels and then your transfer wheels? And then we'll talk about the shooter after. I think uh, the compression is about uh, seven millimeters we have in our intake as uh, as well as, as most throughout our robot. Okay, awesome. And now talking about the shooter, I, I see it's a single motor shooter, is that correct? Um, and if so, what wheel are you using? How has that worked out for you? So actually we have two motors on each side powering uh, the same shaft of our shooter. And uh, the wheel we're using is the Gobeta Rhino wheels. Got it. So you're you're running one motor for your intake, one motor for your transfer, and then two motors for your shooter. Is that is that correct? And so with the yep. with the Rhino wheel, is it the the softer like 30A wheel or is it the harder? Uh, I think it's like 65 or 75A durometer wheel. Uh, it's the 30A Rhino wheels. Okay. Okay. Got it. And a uh, 96 millimeter wheel. So when you're when you're shooting, how fast are you spinning that motor as far as your motor power is concerned? So we have about 1 to 1.5 belt ratio, so we're getting about 9,000 RPM. Oh wow, okay. So I think a lot of teams, from what I've heard, are shooting a little bit slower, you know, around like 5,000 RPM or so. So uh, what, what made you realize that you need to run this motor at such a fast speed? Is it the shot angle or what is it? I think that we wanted the robot to be able to shoot in both, both the close zone and the far zone from the field. And therefore, we decided to go with uh, a higher RPM on the shooter. Cool. And would it be possible to sh see a shot uh, right now? Just kind of see how that exit path is. Awesome. So talking a little bit about that whole two motors versus single motor uh, discussion, did you start with two motors on your robot? and then, Or did you start with one motor on your robot and then move up to two? Or did you just have two from the get-go? Um, I think, yeah, we first experimented with one motor and then we decided that having two motor is, having two motors are better because it prevents one motor to be overheating and also distributes it evenly. Were, were you having overheating issues with just a one motor shooter before? Yeah, we're having a little bit overheating because of the length of the match and if we were powering the motor uh, continuously throughout the whole match, it, it would get pretty hot and then it also, uh, draws a lot of battery. Mm -hmm. So so right now you guys are running your motor just continuously the entire match. Uh, you're not like stopping and starting it between intaking and shooting cycles. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. And as far as uh, like shot speed goes, how do you decide between different speeds when you're close and far away from the goal? Are you using the limelight camera on the robot or is it all just manual? Uh, yeah, we're actually using our limelight camera for sensing the A protag uh, on the goal. And we actually used um, a polynomial aggression graph uh, to tune the values of how much velocity is going to power to the motor and on whether how far the robot is according to the goal. Very cool. And I think this is something teams can learn a lot from. Can you speak a little bit to how many data points you took for this, right? Was it just like 10 shots around the field, 50 shots? How many How many data points did you take uh, in order to build this? Uh, we actually took uh, uh, about 10 shots uh, from the April tag uh, to make sure that it's, uh, it's precise. 
Okay, and then as far as like tuning motor speeds go, did you like what different positions in the field did you shoot at? What angles did you shoot from? What can teams learn from this? Uh, we can actually shoot from uh, any other angles because we also have another function that is uh, auto align. So basically, the limelight when it senses the April tag, it will auto align to the goal. Okay. Got it. And the last thing I want to ask about is the shooter exit angle. I see you guys have a 3D printed piece at the top to define that exit angle uh, for the artifact. How did you determine this angle and what is it? Uh, I think this angle is determined just by a lot of testing and uh, ended, we ended up with, with this angle. Okay, got it. And is this, so you're running the same exact angle for both close shots and far shots. Is that that's true? And how well is that working for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So last things I want to wrap up is, you know, Baseball Plus is really, really good. What do you think are the biggest upgrades teams can look to make from this type of design? I think that a uh, very big upgrade is the an intake, because again, our intake only fits one ball horizontally. And so I think teams can improve the width of the intake to maybe a full length or just can fit up to more balls so they can move around and collect artifacts more easily around the field. Awesome. Well, Royal Turtles, thank you guys so much. You know, you always build fantastic base spots every season, and I'm really glad we could talk through the decode base spot you have built. So I'm really excited to see how competitions go for the rest of the season, how base spot and base spot plus evolve. But thank you so much for uh, explaining base spot plus to the community. Reporting for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Ab Haas, and this is Team 23070, the Royal Turtles. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. If your team is looking for inspiration, check out the Studica Robotics FTC Starter Bot to get you going. Studica Robotics structure options are available in multiple colors with new components now available. Build better robots and receive a 25% discount off most kits and parts and apply for team grants when you go to studica.com robots. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu first.